WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, so excuse my voice today. Uh, we've got a lot of allergies going around at the moment. It's just uh, in spring and it's uh, certainly making itself well known to me. Um, so excuse the voice. Um, what I want to show is uh, something I'm working on um, in Bricks, and I want to put some of the tutorials that I make into a common place. Uh, so I had a first look at the Bricks Loop Builder, which is really, really, really good. Um, it is missing some filtering at the moment. Uh, I believe that's in the roadmap. Hopefully that's going to come in the not too distant future. Um, so I want to show you quickly here is if I scroll this uh, page here, I'm getting these uh, tiles coming in. And it's kind of that, you know, that GSAP kind of thing where it's staggered. So as they come in and out, there's a slight staggering on them. Um, and I want to show you how I've done that. Um, that's pretty much the purpose of the tutorial today. So heading over to the actual builder, I've got a typical uh, structure where I've got a section uh, for my tutorials. I've got a container uh, for wrapping the, the entire tutorial section. Um, then I've got a block with the heading. We don't need to do that, but... Uh, I just that, did that for some alignment. And then we've got a tutorial loop item. And you can see this little uh, infinite symbol or infinity symbol next to it, uh, which means it's got a loop. Uh, and we have an account kind of loop, we've just got a query loop, and we're querying a custom post type created with Jet Engine called Tutorial. That's pretty straightforward so far. Now, what I want to do is uh, animate these as they come in in a staggered way, as they come into the viewport. A separate video on how to detect and add those animations so you can have a look at that separately uh, but for now all we need to know is to make this work on that tutorial uh, loop item um, I've got a few classes I've got this tutorial item which is basically for my flex property so I'm not going to go into that um, I've got my VPA track which is from the other video which is going to tell it to track this item in the viewport and I've got a uh, CSS class for the animation for when it tracks, which I'm going to talk about there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about up here. So those three classes are added to the loop item. Um, now, my tracking and animating class animates the first child. So I've got a block underneath that with a ribbon and an image. So my ribbon is where it's got advanced, beginner, etc. The image, obviously, is the image behind that. So that's pretty simple so far. Uh, and this whole loop here uh, just links to, uh, where are we, where is it linking to? Sorry, the image. Um, got it linking somewhere here. There we go. Don't have a data, the post URL. So you click on that and it goes to the post URL to display the post. Uh, so I'll show you that shortly. So that's pretty much what we've got to make this work. Cool part here that I just discovered uh, through playing with uh, bricks. We have a look at this tutorial loop item and go to my style tab and in my attributes I've created a style attribute called style and I've added a variable name dash dash item dash index and this here is, I'm going to zoom in again on that, is a really cool thing in Bricks. The way they do the dynamic data using curly braces is you can keep adding to this whatever you want. So the Function I'm using, if you actually look for this down in the list, it's under advanced and output PHP function. And what that's going to do is adds this echo curly braces, uh, and then you put the name of your PHP function that you actually want uh, in there. Okay, so if we have a look at the code for that, um, I've got a bit of code here, get loop index. Just created a PHP function called WPG get loop index. I've set a static variable. There's a, I don't know if this is a code box issue or the way uh, Bricks is calling these, but normally what I would do is just have this as a variable on zero outside the function and then increment it um, for whatever reason, which I can't be bothered troubleshooting. Um, when I do that, every time it runs this function, it's reset to zero. So uh, I'm not sure why that is. The other thing that's happening is for some reason, again, I don't know if this is a WP code box thing or it's a brick thing, but this function seems to get called twice before the first loop. So what I would want to happen, I would want this first item to be index of zero, the second one of index of one, two, three, four, etc. 
uh, but what it's doing is it's starting that at two. So it must be being called twice prior to this first item. I'm not sure why. So the fix for that is to just set the static variable of the current loop index to minus two, and then increment that by one each time it's called and return the current loop index. So what that's going to do down here is every time it calls that function, it's going to increment that. So first one we'll have on our, our first item is going to be zero, next one's one, next one's two, etc. So let's have a look at that in the actual code. We look at the actual code. So we can see here, there's my first item, got an item index of zero. My next item down, so just identify that. This one here. And we've got a item index of one, item index of two, item index of three. So you don't need any third party plugins to do this. You just need to create a PHP function here uh, with a name. In this case, it's WPG, G, WPG get loop index. Uh, and in your uh, dynamic uh, tag, so I actually just, just grab this. I'll show you what I mean. I'll grab that, copy that. And this is a standard attribute setting a style variable of uh, dash dash item index. And I'm going to use the custom output. It just adds this echo. I just add colon and then my function name. And that works. So it's a really, really easy way to add additional information. Uh, there's a bunch of dynamic stuff that you can add. Uh, what I want to know is which item index is a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Now, what I then do is in my animations uh, classes. So when this is in the view, I've got a animation class called uh, VPA slide fade index. So this is a new class that I've just added. Again, we look at the first child. Uh, that's explained in the previous video that talks about this. I'm not going to talk about that here. But a item delay, so each item in delay is 100 milliseconds. Um, how far it's going to animate. Um, I set my in delay time, so how long is it going to delay before it comes into the view or out of the view? I'm using my item delay times the item index. So that's the one that's incrementing each time it adds an um, element to the loop. And that's my transition and my timing. So let's have a quick look here. So at the moment, if I do a F5, yeah, it staggers in a little bit. Staggers in a little bit there. That's with a 100 millisecond delay between each. If I made that, say, 300 milliseconds, and F5, it's a longer delay between each one. So it's as simple as doing that. So just add a uh, class attribute for the dash dash item delay, um, create a PHP function to just increment uh, on the loop, um, and then just call that from your style tab using the curly braces, echo, colon, and your function name. Pretty cool. So I'll leave it at that. Um, hopefully that's something that uh, inspires some ideas of what you can do with this. Uh, you can add so much with these dynamic attributes. It's actually very, very good. Uh, I'm excited to do more with this and learn uh, as I go, but um, there you go. And, and by the way, the uh, site that I'm just demonstrating on is just something in progress and I'm, I'm Considering uh, it's not something that is going to be a live site just yet, uh, but if I decide I'm going to do a lot more uh, bricks based um, tutorials, then I'll probably look at uh, releasing this as a site just to keep all my bricks stuff in the one place. So I hope you like this. If you do, please subscribe, please like, and uh, let everyone know. Thank you.